Uche seconds loses as appeal court okays PDP's national convention. And candidates of the same religion won't fly the APC presidential flag, says Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omo Agege. This is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anna The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Uche Sekundus, suspended, has lost his bid to stop the party's planned national convention. PDP's national convention is now scheduled to hold on Saturday, that's the 30th of October. Reading the judgment, Justice Gabriel Kolawoli described the suit before it as an afterthought and an abuse of the court process. The court blamed him for not acting when his ward and local government suspended him until now. Well, joining us to discuss this is Duran Odeyemi. He is the Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Odeyemi. Thank you very much for having me. I'm happy to be with you this evening. Here we are again talking about the PDP and the planned national convention and, of course, the embattled um, chairman, uh, president, national chairman of your party, uh, Prince Uche Sekundus. Um, from the court ruling uh, and, and the outcome of this um, you know, judgment, um, what, what does that say about the chairmanship of Prince Uche Sekundus going forward? Um, we are greatly relieved by that judgment because uh, we were very apprehensive since uh, many of us will not know what is likely to be the outcome of the judgment. But when eventually it was pronounced, we were extremely happy. And uh, we had a meeting this evening, congratulating ourselves that the convention will go ahead tomorrow. Um, well, uh, uh, Prince Richard is uh, still having many issues in court against the PDP. And uh, we are only waiting. And we see it to the end. But as a party, we are moving on. When you say as a party you're moving on, it means that you're going to conduct your national convention, which means that you're going exactly. to have a new working committee, uh, which also means that you might or might not retain um, Prince Uche II until his tenure expires, which should be expiring in December. I'm part of the national uh, officers that is directly involved about the terminal dates of our administration. But uh, many of us believe that there is no sacrifice that is too much for, the, for us to make for the party. If the National Executive Council of the, of the, uh, of the party decides on the new dates that uh, this administration, this new uh, working committee should commence, we have no any objection to it. It's just a, number, it's just a matter of dates. Because we were supposed to end this administration by December 9th, so if in the wisdom of the National Executive Council, it is decided that our um, uh, term ends on the 31st, on the 30th of uh, October, we have no question about it. We are happy to go. So let's talk about um, what this court judgment means. Um, I, I'm going to start with someone who's from the state where Prince Uche Sakandus is from. Um, he's a member of the House of Representatives, Kingsley Chinda. Uh, he, um, he's the leader of the PDP caucus uh, in the House of Representatives. I'd like to quote him directly. He has said that neither Secondus nor the PDP uh, has won this case. He's saying that the victory was for all Nigerians. How does this benefit Nigerians? We are here discussing PDP. Nigerians are looking forward to the new working committee of the party. There has not been any other political party in the news other than PDP. And that is why, and as the credible opposition to APC, that we take over rulership from APC uh, in 2023. Our matter concerns every Nigeria, and that is why you are bringing me on. That is why we are in the news. So a, we are congratulating Nigeria because we now we will now have a political party that we enjoy relative peace, and we prepare 
towards giving or providing a credible candidate, a presidential candidate in 2023. So that is exactly what he means by congratulating Nigeria. And I join in in congratulating Nigerians that by uh, Sunday morning, the names of the new executive uh, committee of the party will be rolled out and they will give PDP the applause that we know how to manage whatever is perceived to be our internal crisis. I want to take you back to a conversation we had months ago on the same issue with Prince Uche Secondus, who's claiming that there's been some level of high-handedness and then there are people who are trying to um, destroy the party. Hence, um, you know, this whole imbroglio uh, and which has led to a court ruling and now that you're about to have your convention who's to say that this puts a pin on all of the infighting that's been happening within the party and who's to say that you know at the end of the day when the new working committee uh, emerges that as in your words the party is going to be successful in enthroning good leaders or the leaders that nigerians want who's to say At no time do we stop talking among ourselves. And the essence of a, a good political party is to be able to manage its crisis. In as much as we believe we still have matters in court, uh, you know, which uh, is that against the party. The new administration, the new National Working Committee, we make it a point of duty that uh, we still need him as one of the leaders of the party, not only him, whoever is agreed with whatever has happened within the party. We will continue to talk among ourselves and uh, we will continue to exploit the internal mechanism of, you know, resolving issues. So the new administration, the new NWC, will not stop at talking to Prince Secondus and all uh, members who are agreed. So it's part of the duty that they are going to inherit. Let's talk about the inner workings of the zoning process, if that's even going to be uh, the order of the day for the PDP this time around uh, in preparation for 2023. Um, I remember when we talked about this issue of zoning, um, at the time, Prince Uche Secondu said that uh, all, all are welcome, all are allowed to throw their hats into the ring. Uh, but is there going to be a zoning process? Will the PDP be honoring um, zoning issues in terms of who the national chairman will be and who the uh, party flag bearer will be at the end of the day in terms of the presidency? The issue of who is going to be the chairman is already concluded because as at this night we are only going to the convention tomorrow to ratify the, uh, the election of uh, uh, Senator uh, Yosha Ayu as national chairman. And concerning the presidential issue, by the time the zoning was being done, it was expressly stated that all other zones in the country will be allowed to present a candidate or whoever is interested in the presidential candidate primary should come out. When we get to the bridge, we know how to cross it. Right now, we are concerned about having a very good, sound political party. After that, we then look at the issue of the presidential. Where they come from will be determined by the party, and they will give Nigeria a very good uh, opportunity to assess our candidate and eventually present a candidate to them. Isn't, that, isn't there a laid down rule of sorts where if uh, the party chairmanship is zoned, for example, to the South South, and then of course the presidential candidate cannot come from that same zone? I mean, now that you're telling me that every other region can present a person to, um, you know, to run for presidency, does that not in any way impede the idea of zoning within the PDP? Correct me if I'm wrong. In PDP, and let me say in politics generally, 24 hours is a long time. The more you look at the journalist, the less you see when it comes to politics. That we are choosing our chairmanship from the north is never an indication that we have foreclosed the issue or we have said that the candidate cannot come from the north. It can come from the north, it can come from the south, it can come from anywhere. What I'm telling you now is, wait until we get to that bridge, we will see how we are going to cross it. And how do you intend to do this with that? Again, your party does have um, rules and regulations that are guiding it. Are you going to not do those things um, 
within the confines of those rules and regulations. Again, uh, we see a lot of people who seemingly are interested uh, in running for the presidency. How many candidates have uh, already indicated interest so far? This is me prying. I wouldn't know, because as I'm talking to you right now, I don't know anybody that has indicated interest. But I want to draw you a conclusion from the last experience we had in Port Harcourt. Almost 12 Australians came out that they wanted to be president, uh, to be our flag bearer. At the end of the day, um, Adiku Abubakar emerged as a candidate. And if you remember vividly, even uh, Senator Bukola Saraki, who participated in, last, in that election, volunteer to be the campaign manager for Atiku. That is the piece we enjoy in TDP. So whatever is going to happen, let all this... That PDP has changed. That PDP, has changed. That, PDP that we saw has obviously metamorphosed in so many ways. That is not the PDP that we have today. So I'm trying to compare today's PDP with yesterday's PDP. It's not necessarily fair, is it? PDP is the same. The mode of operation is the same. The people who are there are the same. The system and the constitution remains the same. All that you need to do is wait until that time when we want to choose our president. Then you will see a new dimension of PDP, contrary to your opinion, that you know things are changing in PDP. Nothing has changed. It's all politics. And we continue to play it. And finally, uh, on the issues or the other issues that are pending, um, how does the PDP intend to deal with those cases, of course, so that it doesn't raise an ugly head while you are preparing? to fight the opposition? Good enough, uh, the new legal advisor that is coming on board is the senior advocate of Nigeria. And that is not to underrate or to undermine people who are not senior advocates. What I'm saying in essence is we have a good legal team that will be able to undo whatever is the legal matter within PDP. And apart from that, just like I said, we will continue to dialogue among ourselves and we believe all the people that have benefited in this party will listen to the words of wisdom and allow peace to reign. And talking about peace, I did promise I was going to end it there, but let's look at states and local governments where there are still teething problems in terms of who's leading the party or who's not. And I'm, I'm going to use Cross River State as an example. Um, we saw the governor move to the APC, and right now, um, if you ask me, the PDP in Cross River is struggling. We do have the former deputy governor uh, leading the caretaker committee for that party uh, up until now. Uh, what are the plans of the PDP to build a strong legacy within that state to be able to um, fight the APC if there be any fight left in them uh, come 2023? Which, uh, which state do Cross you mention River. now? Cross River. Cross River. As far as we are concerned as a party, we virtually all the state matters to us. And uh, you will agree with me that the expiration of our term ends in two days. It is part of the new assignment or the assignment of the incoming National Working Committee that Nigerian as a component body belongs to PDP and we just must do everything within in the confines of the law to ensure that our candidates and our people remain and keep the loyalty to the party. So, whether across rivers or rivers or wherever, we see Nigerian as a whole, as an institution, or where PDP must contest election. I, I don't think you really answered my question. Yes, we know that PDP will contest elections, but do you stand a chance? Because the party structures were, were taken over by the APC. They took almost okay. half of, if not 80% of the party structure. They all moved to the, to the APC. Your party secretariat at the time was taken over again by the APC. We saw the former governor, uh, Donald Duke, coming to somewhat to the rescue of the party. We... The former governor, Lee Alimoke, was almost nowhere in sight. And it seems more like a scramble. Uh, so, I, again, I ask you, is there hope for the PDP in Cross River State? You have two days to go, but then you do also, also have, uh, in hindsight, what would, you, what would you be telling those who are succeeding you to do to deal with that issue? Can the PDP build itself back to be able to stand against the APC? Nobody 
is bigger than the party. And that is why our motto remains power belongs to the people. The absence or the exit of the present of the present crop of leaders that you are mentioning gives an opportunity to other, other party members to emerge as leaders. And they only needed that opportunity, which they are seizing right now. And they, they, will, they, are, they will be adequately represented at the convention tomorrow. And apart from that, they have started rebuilding the party in such a way that PDP will remain a force to be reckoned with in Cross River. Okay. Dural Deyemi is the National Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. We want to thank you for speaking with us. We, we appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm happy to be with you. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, the Christian Association of Nigeria has assured, uh, I've been assured, of the balance in the religious selection for 2023 APC ticket. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about it.